What's up everyone, welcome back. Today we're playing Golos Tireless Pilgrim in Historic Brawl. However, we're doing it with a twist. We're doing Mono Blue Golos. So, I'm sure you all know what Golos does, but we'll go over them real quickly. So, when he ETBs, we can fetch any land out of our deck. In this deck, we're going to go get the World Tree, because it turns all of our blue land sources into lands that tap for one man of any color, so that we can activate Golos's second ability, which allows us to exile the top three cards of our library if we pay two and Wooburg, and we can play any of those spells for free. Um, so we're doing this as a deck building challenge in mono blue, um, which definitely has its its own hurdles, um, but the I found the best way to build this style of deck is sort of a lot of counter spells, you know, and then all the blue good cards and and, and colorless payoffs. Um, what are what, what's good in blue? Well, card draw. So we got like Seagate Restoration, right? Um, we got Omniscience, so we can play spells for free. Um, we have Icebreaker Kraken, so we can tap all of our opponent's artifacts and creatures, and they don't untap during the next untap step. Um, it's also a 8-8, which doesn't hurt. Um, Corbus the Sea God, we can create a hexproof 8-8, tap all their stuff, and then gain control of their best permanent. And then all the extra turn spells that we could fit into the deck. <laughs> um, somewhere in there is a win, probably. Um, Shark Typhoon, another honorable mention. So, you know, we don't, Mono Blue doesn't have removal, except for like Raven form, right? Um, but it doesn't have removal, so we're either going to bounce stuff to their hand or counter it all together. Um, we have a lot of counter spells. So it's counter spells plus ramp plus all the best blue card draw and end game payoffs. Um, not a lot else going on in this deck. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything specific. I, I would say the, the mana base, like we went over the the world tree is an important piece. We have Cascading Cataracts as a backup in case they somehow blow this up. Some decks run like Field of Ruin and, and you know land destruction spells like that. So we have to have a backup. Otherwise our deck literally cannot <laughs> activate the uh, ability of Golos. Um, but we also have Cavern of Souls. So we can make Golos uncounterable. Uh, command Tower um, just to help mana fix. Um, we have our own Field of Ruin just in case they have a land. Uh, every monocolored deck should have Nykthos in it because it just adds a ton of mana. Um, Plaza of Heroes make our commander um, Hexproof and Indestructible in case they try to wipe it. Reliquary Tower so we can keep all the cards we draw. Castle Vantra so we can scry through our deck. So this is essentially mono blue control with Golos as a way to ramp slash take us over the top. Um, let's see if we can actually win with this pile. If you like this kind of content, hit that subscribe button. If you're someone who's been watching my videos and hasn't subscribed yet, what, what's, up, what's up with that? Hit that subscribe button. Come on. Come on. Help me out. Where else are you going to see mono blue Golos? I mean, come on. <laughs> um, Golos... So the other, you know, issue with this deck uh, is that, yep, Golos is a uh, hell cute, quote unquote, commander, meaning we're going to play all the other best commanders in this format, like Kinnon. So we are detrimenting ourselves to be in a monocolor, and the other people playing these decks don't know that. So, you know, they're all playing the best version of their best of the best commanders. Mystical Dispute is wonderful. They get to go first, but we can Mystical Dispute Kinnon and uh, maybe take control of it and go from there. This counts as a land, so we're going to play this turn one. Right? No, no, we have to do this untapped. So the way Kinnon usually goes is they only keep like two lands in their hand and then everything else in here is a ramp creature and a giant payoff. So if we counter Kinnon once it's usually enough to slow them down because they're gonna oh maybe not okay well that's that's perfect do it like this 
Their deck doesn't work unless Kanan is on the battlefield. So that slows them down. Good game. Are they going to scoop? Are they going to scoop? No, they're going to keep playing. I don't know why they said good game. Alright, so... What do we do? Next turn they can get down Kinnon. And then the turn after that we can take control of Kinnon? Is that what we do? Did I already play a land this turn? I think I did, didn't I? I can play Midnight Clock and have two mana up. Yeah, we already played a land because otherwise Cavern would be lit up. So... Let's do it like this and put some stops. And make them think that we have counter magic. Midnight clock cooking. We'll make them sweat a little bit. Eh. Resolves. <laughs> we don't have a counter, but we just we want them to think we do so that they play around it. Would you like to attack with your 1 1? No. Interesting. Okay, so we can Thassa. Oops. It's just battlefield attacks. Put slime cutter on the one target creature. Okay, so that doesn't change anything. Oh, okay, interesting. Uh, scout, because that's what Golos is. And play Golos. Go get the World Tree. I mean, we could get Nick those two, which is uh, it's so. But we're 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 doing the meme. Um, we can play this. Oh, Schneiza. Uh, no attacks. Let's, let's continue to ramp. Oh, we can go get Nykthos now. Oh, sick. Okay, cool. I Yeah, I mean, obviously I planned that out. Obviously, I'm just such a good magic player. So now they can't attack with Sludge Monster. Enemy Full Titan. Yeah, that's a good card. See what lands they get. I'm actually genuinely curious what lands they get. Uh, hopefully not Field of Ruin. <laughs> If they do get Field of Ruin, they can't activate it this turn. So we have one turn to spin the wheel with Golos. Uh, okay. No, they just got two ramp cards. That's fine. They're tapped out. Would you like to attack into my indestructible 6-5? No? They do? Oh, interesting. Okay, I see, I see. So whenever it attacks... Hmm. <laughs> Is it just creatures? 
target creature. I would have picked Golos if I was them, but... Yeah, no blocks. What does this do? Okay, so we can give him a 4-4. Four, four. Do we have enough to do both here? I think we do if we do it like this. Oh. Oh, wow. That gives us so much mana. Okay. Weak, weak, weak. Okay. Why don't we... Give you a 4-4. Four, four. And... Shark Typhoon. No, we can't do that. We can do this. Yep. Take that. They block with the four four. We could we could take control of their primeval titan, but then that gives them Kinnon, I believe. I don't know, I don't know of the wording on that. Let's just play it safe and ramp. <laughs> Okay, so what other cool land can we get? We can get Mystic Sanctuary. Do we have anything to get back? Uh, Mystical Dispute? Resculpt? Yeah. Oh. Okay, never mind. I didn't do what I, what I thought. I guess it has to enter untapped, and since this says tapped, it doesn't even give me the option. Okay. Go get some more lands. They're just getting generic lands. No blocks. I like uh, I like my board state. We should get Shark Typhoon. I should, probably should have played Shark Typhoon last turn, but I really wanted to spin the wheel with Golos. <laughs> Meteor Golem. Okay, so what do they blow up? Mind Flare? Okay, so they get Cannon back. The One Ring. That's pretty good. So, that blue, blue, this only gives us, oh yeah, this doesn't do anything anymore. Can we still, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, so can we spin the wheel and... Do the other things? I don't think so. Kitten's about to go off.
Okay. We should have played this first. I'm I'm definitely fumbling. <laughs> okay. Submit one. We have a counter spell. Midnight Clock's not going to go off for a little bit. Meteor Gone was a good draw for them. So now they're going to activate Kinnon like 800 times. But that's okay, because we can... Um... Oh, I think we have to counter that. Good game. Resolve, that's fine. We can play, we have Tails in, so we can play around Neza Hall. Um, resolve. What does this thing do again? Right, non creature spell, they draw a card. Surprised they only attacked with Primeval Titan. I guess, oh, I just get the trigger because we had uh, protection for everything, that's right. Cool, an island. Well, um, Shark Typhoon. They get to draw. Why did I do that? <laughs> I should have waited. Oh well. Discard two cards. Yeah, discard you two. Now, they're going to attack with everything and I die, right? <laughs> yeah, I think I horribly misplayed that. Horribly, horribly misplayed that. It's too bad this isn't an artifact that I can... Draw. Yeah, man, I think I just. Okay, what do I. So I block the 7 7. I still take 1, 4, 10. Yeah, exactly lethal. I don't think I have. And then I, I would die on my upkeep to the 1 ring anyway. So we gotta find a solution with the 1 ring. Nope, not good enough. GG. Um, I think I had the ability to win that game and completely blew it, so that's on me. But uh, we 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 shall learn and regroup. It's a, you know it's a little weird playing mono blue Golos kind of uh, two different deck building ideologies jammed together. I should have played the, uh, um, is it the same person? Well, I'm looking forward to a rematch against Kinnon, because, uh, I definitely messed that last one up. We get to go first. We can exile Kinnon. So that works for me. 
So, yeah, that'll keep them off. And then River's Rebuke really messes them up, too. Um, we'll play this tapped. Then Cavern of Souls into Resculpt. Okay, well, in that case, I think we ramp. Because they still, even if they play Kinnon next turn, they can't, um, they, like, they can't go off with Kinnon next turn. Uh, no blue source, interesting. Okay. Alright. Pass. This allows them to add one man of any color. Uh, easy spell pierce. Go get the world tree. Okay, well, I don't know if that was the same player, but we got revenge on Kinnon. Uh, so I'll take it. Not, not, the, not a lot to analyze in that game. I think we just uh, tilted them with spell pierce. Which I definitely understand. I have also been tilted by Spell Pierce. So a different different deck would be nice, Arena. Can you match us against a non Kinnon deck? That would be just so nice of you. So like I was saying before, it's interesting playing this deck. It's definitely fun, but it's interesting because Golos is like the commander wants you to ramp Golos out and then spin the wheel a bunch um, to play big spells. But Mono Blue as an archetype wants you to kind of play draw go, hold your spells back because they're usually instants like counter spells and things like that, and play the control game. So it's two conflicting ideology that's why it's kind of hard it's kind of hard for my brain to wrap itself around playing this deck definitely still fun though uh we get to go first what does this guy do uh a ramp creature whenever you catch a creature spell with five or greater put a plus one plus one counter okay so it's a it's just like mono green ramp that's all right that's cool i should probably build this deck that seems like a good commander for mono green ramp um, Rhystic Study's good. I mean, this whole hand's good, so we keep get to go first as well. We should get Rhystic Study down as soon as physically possible. And let the cards start flowing. Ah! Kind of awkward in our opening hand, but um, this is fine. Do it like this. I think next turn we Rhystic Study and then World Tree. We gotta be careful because green does have ways of blowing up lands. I just don't know how many of them are on Arena. That's a good card. So we Rhystic Study. World Tree. Because it comes into play tap. That's why I didn't want to play Reliquary Tower. Because we didn't have anything to do with one colorless mana. So they could play a six mana something. Or 
you know, the, I mean, they have six mana to, to play their spells. Um, they also have, like, Reclamation Sage and things like yeah, and Haywire Might. They can pay here if they want, which they should. They're probably going to exile, they're going to, or sacrifice Haywire Might to destroy Ristic Study, which is fair. Um, but they just spent a lot of their mana to do that, so that's okay. Alright, so given that we already have the World Tree, do we just play Golos? They don't, even if they have a fight spell, they don't have anything that they can um, win the fight with, because Golos has a big butt, five toughness. Um, honestly, I think we ramp and we get to Cyclonic Rift and we overpower them that way. Because it seems like a lot of their ramp is through their creatures. Um, decline the Iron Crag. Accept the Golos trigger. So what do we do here? This land, whatever it is, comes into play tapped. Um, Nykthos isn't really good right now. Castle Vantress? Eh, let's get Rivendale. It can help us scry through our deck. They're gonna ramp. Go down a land to get two lands. So now they have eight mana. That's really good for them. If I had known they had that, I would have gotten a field of uh, ruin. Because that is really good for them. However, uh, Cyclonic Rift still kind of wrecks them. Four, five, six. So we just need one more land. We're not blocking the question beast. Darn. Okay. Um. Well, we have syncopate. Should we just hold up Syncopate and if they try to do a big mana thing, counter it? Because right now their board isn't that threatening. It's just all mana creatures. We can play the Celestis, which would give us enough mana to Cyclonic Rift next turn. And then we'd have three mana left over and we could solve the equation. Because solve an instant? No, it's a sorcery. We probably need to counter whatever comes down next turn. Uh, I really want the land, though. Okay. Well, I think we Celestis. And we pass. So that we have Syncopate up. Because they have a ton of mana. So if they play something huge, or like an X spell, or something like that, then we can counter it. If they just play a, a bunch of uh, smaller things, then, well, it is what it is. What does this do? Trample haste. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, exile up to that many target cards from their graveyard. Put a plus one, plus one counter on. Form of three each creature card exiled this way. You gain one life for each non-creature card exiled. Okay, so they have... One, two, three, four, five mana. So syncopate wouldn't work here. So we have to let this through. Resolve. What does this do? Can't be countered, of course. Way to play around syncopate opponent. Way to play around it. Okay, resolve. 
can't be countered. Protection from blue. Okay. Well, th this is rough, but we are going to Cyclonic Rift them next turn, so we got to keep that in mind. They can give it haste, which they're going to. And then what? Attack all? Pass. They're going to attack with their 4-4s. Four I mean, I'm cool if you want to just attack that way. Okay. So I can block this guy. Pass. Block you. Maybe they have a fight spell. Maybe that's their last card. Nope. Um, we can scry two here. Ulamog. That's really good, but we don't have enough mana for Ulamog. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. <laughs> oh, man. It's so good, but we don't have the mana for it. Yep. Yeah, we don't have the mana for it. Okay. We can do this on their turn. We can also spin the wheel, but I think we Cyclonic Rift them. Okay. I think they're going to be incentivized to use their Nykthos to, like, play more stuff. And so, Cyclonic Rift gets extra, extra good after they've already tapped Nykthos. Green. Okay. It definitely, if they play an Ulamog or something, it definitely is, uh, it definitely sucks for us. Titan of Industry. Interesting. I wonder what they get rid of. Resolve, or or what they do in general. Oh, they probably create a rhino and put a destroy target artifact. Oh, interesting. They destroy Golos. Huh. Okay. I see. So they're gonna go for the kill. Do we need Golos? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nope, we don't need. We don't need Golos. Oh, I guess we ran out of time. Okay. Well, they better not take away my ability to Cyclonic Rift here. They should definitely float some mana, but they chose not to. Oh, cancel. Resolve. Dang. Pass. Uh, take action? We'll get rid of you. 
right? Did I leave Golos in the graveyard? I did. I'm an idiot. Um, whatever. We'll magic mirror our way out of this. So what? Next turn they'll have one, two, three, four. Yeah, they don't have enough to use Nykthos in any meaningful way. Right? Or do we solve the equation for River's Rebuke? We probably want to solve the equation. We can overflowing inside ourselves as well. We could flow of knowledge. Time warp. We could... Oh, we could get... Um, we could get... Where are you at? Did we already, did they already get rid of that? Come on, timer. <laughs> the freaking timer, man. Did they already get rid of, oh, they did, okay. I don't know why I couldn't remember that. Pass. So now they know we have a river's rebuke, so it's going to slow them down a little bit. Oh, I just missed it, sure. Leaving Golos in the graveyard was stupid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they can play Titan of Industry, right? And destroy target artifact or enchantment. Okay, so we could do this and then planar incision it if they target it. And then Rivers rebuke them the next turn. Sounds good. They're definitely going to be incentivized to get rid of this. Yep. Resolve. Let them target it. Oh, nice. Okay, so we do this, get an 8-8. Eight, eight. We don't want to Rivers Rebuke them just yet because they'll just replay Titan of Industry and blow this up or blow this up. Yeah, read the card. It's a doozy. Next turn I'm going to tap all your stuff, then I'm going to gain control of your best thing. They are mono green though, so they probably have more than one way of getting rid of enchantments and or artifacts, but hopefully they don't have any in their hand. Questing beast. Okay. They're going to bring the whole squad down, give it trample, or give it haste. Probably. They're gonna attack with it. You're gonna <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. 
So we block the Titan. And we take nine. And then we can rivers rebuke them next turn. Actually, I might not even rivers rebuke them because this is going to tap down all their stuff. If they get rid of this, then I will rivers rebuke them. We got rid of the Titan, so they can't put that back down to blow up our stuff. Gallic readers. Okay. All their stuff gets tapped down. Ooh, and this is going to tap down all their stuff too. We can mind flare them. We could, what, take their questing beast? Is that the best card? Yeah. We could put them in a Thassa um, Icebreaker crack and lock. So this says when it enters the battlefield, artifacts and creatures target opponent controls don't untap during that player's next untap step. And then this allows us to do it every turn. Um, I don't think I have enough mana to do both right now. One, two... No, I don't. So we'll play... Thassa. And then Mind Flare. Decline. We'll take their questing beast. Um, they don't. They don't untap, so we can feel free to attack with our eight eight. Um, at the beginning of your end step, exile to one of target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under your control. I was debating whether or not to. Um, uh, flicker the questing beast because I didn't know if that would come back under my control but I think based on the wording it would I just wanted to have another blocker up in case they had like a hasty creature anyway uh, five life but we did it we figured it out commander in the graveyard uh, no problem no problem the magic mirror is always such a good card it takes a couple turns to get going but once it gets going it's insane I, I kind of wish the game could go on so I could do the hard lock with the uh, Icebreaker Kraken and Thassa. That would have been really funny against Mono Green, but it's okay. We can imagine what it would have been like. If you like locking your opponents out of the game, hit that subscribe button. <laughs> Brawl? Oh, man. I think I'm just gonna leave this game. I I do not want to play this game. <laughs> For those who don't know, Brawl is Counterspell Kindred the deck, so uh, no thanks. I'm playing a mono blue good stuff deck. You're playing a hard Counterspell deck. It's not gonna be not gonna be good for us. But again, you're playing, you know, if you play this style of deck, you are playing Golos, you're playing against, like, okay, here we go, Ragavan. You're playing against all the other best commanders. And you're at a disadvantage because you've limited yourself to one color. Um, Tail's End is good, but we don't, oh, we, no, we do have another land. We do have another land. Oh, man, this hand is so high in mana value. Tail's End's good, but if they play Ragavan turn one, then they got underneath us. And I think they're going to gain too much value, and our hand is too... Uh, I mean, this is a good hand, but it doesn't help against Ragavan. This is a good. It sucks because like this is a good hand, but it sucks against Ragavan. 
So my instinct is to keep it, but I don't think we can. I'm just not really sure what a good hand against Ragavan is. I mean, I think we just have to let it do its monkey thing, right? Uh, I'm gonna... Oh. Ah, we'll keep. Once we get Golos down... Um, once we get Golos down, we have a blocker. So, we'll just have to think about it that way. If they play Ragavan turn one, you know, what are we gonna do? Yep, so... Smart by them. Ooh, okay, that helps. Uh, yeah, we'll foretell. We'll foretell. We might even save this for the second Ragavan. Um, this is a two-two as well. However, they're mono res. They, you're gonna. T <laughs> he took my reverse rebuke. <laughs> That's fine. That would have been a dead draw for me. Um, playing the Displacer Kitten is risky, even though it's a good blocker for Ragavan. It is uh, probably going to die to a lightning bolt. So. Is this an instant? No, it's a sorcery. We have to get rid of, rid of Ragavan. But then they can just dash it, right? And we don't. We don't have a counter spell for that? Or we do? No. Not... I mean, we do in the deck, but not right now. Um... What does this do? Or, uh, attacks. If you attack with creatures with total power 6 or greater... Okay, so nothing right now. Uh, this sucks. I wish this tap for a man of any color. That would have been nice so I could raven form. But... I think we'll let them get one more hit off Ragavan, then we'll get rid of it. I think we have to ramp. This at least offsets the damage from their deck. A little bit. Obviously not a lot. But every life point counts against Mono Red. It took a land, which is a bummer. That would have been nice. Shadow Spear. Okay. Resculpt. Okay, so now we have two exile effects. I think this has to come down as a land. So this one is instant speed. So I think we Raven form Ragavan. They get a bird. And we hold up Resculpt. Hell Rider. Whenever a creature you control attacks, Hell Rider does one damage to the player or planeswalker it is attacking. Do we mystical dispute this? Probably not, because they have Ragavan. They're not going to dash it in, though. Interesting. Pass. Oh, and... Oh, I see, I see. Man, well, I guess it's too late. So... Okay. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, I think we lost our opportunity to get ahead in this game. We don't have a choice but to resolve all these. Oh, oh, I thought they were making goblins for each one. Okay, I see. Pass. 
Yes. Yeah, down to seven. So, River's Rebuke would have been a good draw, but obviously that's gone. We have Golos as a blocker, but I'm pretty sure... I think I forgot to gain life on their end step. Um, I'm pretty sure that they'll have a lightning bolt or something. Um, yeah, I mean... <clears throat> Den of the bugbear. Okay. Attack all. Yeah, that probably does it. Right? Yep. Give him the good game. Yeah, again, this is why... Like, if you play Ragavan... The deck sucks. I'm, I'm just going to say that. I know I just lost to it, but I'm telling you, the deck sucks because it's, it, it's so, it's so black or white. Like, if you play, like, if I was playing a mono black deck, or any kind of deck with any kind of instant speed removal, they play Ragavan, I remove it. Now Ragavan costs four, or it costs three, or they have to dash it. But if I have the ability to remove it, then they never gain the value and the treasures and all that, and their deck is basically turned off, and then it just becomes, like, bad model red. Um, if you're playing against, like, the type of deck that I just had, where you're able to get Ragavan down turn one, you know, they get to go first, and everything lines up like that for them, then it is a really good deck. But it's... I have a whole video I made on Ragavan, and it, it, it was really, like... All, all or nothing. So to me, that's not a very good deck. That's like a very, <laughs> it's a very like one trick pony kind of deck. So anyway, if you're ever playing Ragavan and you're trying to figure out what hands to keep, you just want hands with the removal and they basically, their deck is turned off because their only source of ramp and card advantage is Ragavan usually. And everything else synergizes with the monkey being on the battlefield. Not a lot we can do in mono blue. I mean, we could have countered it if we had the right spells, but they got to go first, so there is no... I mean, except for Pact and Negation, there's no spell that could have countered them with, you know, no lands. And then, obviously, you know, Pact would have killed us the next turn, but, um, you know, maybe if we had bounce spells and things like that, but this deck doesn't really do that. This deck isn't like a... I don't think there's a you know, like a fading hope type effect in the deck, honestly. Atraxa, okay. So our decks are kind of doing the same thing. Ramp into big value. We have memory lapse for Atraxa. They get to go first. Two lander. Not great, not great. I think we gotta mold this hand. Spell Pierce. We still have Academy of the Wall is really good. This will eventually be good. Okay, we'll keep. Bloodstained Mire, new fetch land from the Khans of Tarkir set. <coughs> pretty, pretty stoked that they put uh, fetch lands on Arena. It's about the back's good card. Let's see if they do like a rampant growth or something. No? Okay. The 
head explorer and growth spiral, go, uh, growth spiral in their hand. Pretty funny. This uh, draws us a card if we cast spells on their turn. Once upon a time, they're going to pick land. I guess they're low on lands. Wash away is a great card. Um, next. All attack. I think we academy wall. They're far away from casting Atroxa. Didn't even realize we got Emrakul in our hand. That's a pretty good one too. Tireless Provisioner. Okay. Great treasures. Yeah, yeah. We have a blocker, so... I play this card in Popper quite a bit. It's really good. Take action. Draw a card. Discard a card. I think we get rid of you... <laughs> yeah, they couldn't handle the value. Like, it always gets me, like, the okay, you're playing the most value pile deck ever assembled, and I draw two cards and counter, or not even counter, just put your shielded back on top of your deck, and... That's what makes you scoop. It's just, I don't know. I don't get it. Maybe they just saw the blue and they were like, nope, I'm out. So yeah, mono blue Golos definitely defeats, defeats Atraxa. Easy wins. Tier zero deck. <laughs> we'll do one more. That's good to know. Pressing QQ will tap all your non-creatures that add mana and float it until you use it. I was always wondering how people do that. It, that's, so that makes sense. That's the... Uh, that's the shortcut. Halana and Elena. Gruel Stompy. Um, one lander. So that's an easy mulligan. This is better. Negate, not good. I mean, the lands are good, but these, not so much. They get to go first. I guess we have to mulligan again. Again, another good hand. Ah, all right. They obviously want want us to take the ramp route. They want uh, the last game to be Golo spin the wheel. Look at this. Just everything, all the ramp. That's fine. That actually might be a way to get over the top of this deck. But we shall see. So, Halana and Lena, if you don't know, basically puts X plus one plus one counters another target creature, where X is uh, Halana and Lena's power, and it gains haste. So, it pumps, Halana and Lena pumps another creature and gives it uh, haste. And trample. Uh, I guess not trample, but a lot of their deck uh, tramples, so... 
essentially make a big creature that we can't block. Alright, well... This is going well. Spell Pierce. Do we play Teferi's Aegis Linsai? We don't have a way to take advantage of it right now. So probably not, right? Probably play the Celestis for the life gain. Hold up Spell Pierce in case they try to ramp or something. I don't know. They are missing red. Oh, there's red. Play their commander. Let's put stops just so they feel like we have a uh, counter spell, which we obviously don't. Or, you know, we do, but not one that hits creatures. Yeah, sure, resolves. Man, they really want us to ramp. Um, yeah, man, I, I guess we just do the thing, right? Take action, go get the world tree, and spin the wheel next turn. We have a land to make this, to make the world tree turn on. We do have a spell pierce still in case they, I don't know, play something non-creature based that we don't like, but I can't imagine they're going to do anything other than play their commander here and pump the questing beast. That's kind of what the deck does. Maybe they have a fight spell? Deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker you don't control when the permanent... You Deals damage equal to its power. I don't think that kills Golos, does it? Because it has death touch? Someone's going to have to explain the wording on that one to me, because... That makes it sound like it just deals damage, not that it deals its own combat damn I don't know whatever take action that seems like I don't understand how that wording works that way yeah I don't understand how that kills my creature but what it is what it is uh we don't have anything in the graveyard so plaza heroes golos again take action um now now what do we get Do we just get an island? I mean, it's got to be like a utility land here, right? Let's get Reliquary Tower just in case we spin the wheel and hit something like a big card draw spell. Do you have any more weirdly worded fight spells in your hand? See, okay, the reason why this doesn't make sense to me is because, and I'm sure I'm just missing something, but the reason this doesn't make sense is because I played a deck like a month ago. I built the deck around Glissa, which had First Strike and Death Touch, and I used fight spells in it, and it didn't work. Like, I assumed, like, oh, if, if they fight, then it, when it deals combat, or it deals damage, then, uh, you know, it'll deal the Death Touch damage to the creature, but... Over and over, I would use a fight spell with Glissa and another creature, and it would only deal the damage. It wouldn't deal, like, death touch damage. So, 
I don't understand why certain ones of these deal death touch damage and certain ones of don't. I mean, it, yeah. Again, I'm sure I'm just missing something, but I, uh, I'm legitimately stumped. <laughs> Huh? You're attacking with your creature that I can kill? So you must have a lightning bolt, right? Because otherwise, why would you attack with this? So, yeah, no blocks. They probably have a pump spell. That's, that's, it's green, right? I mean, they either have a lightning bolt or they have like a, some type of pump spell. Do you have a fight spell? No. Mystic Sanctuary. Can I do this and still Golos? One. So one, two. Or one, two, three, four. No, I can't. Alright, well. I'll just spin the wheel. See what we get. River's Rebuke would be sick. I mean, we'll take a free Shark Typhoon. That's not bad at all. We'll take this. Crawling Barons, sure. And then I guess we play this. Make a creature. No attacks. Not not the best spin of the wheel, but you know, we have some stuff to take advantage of it with if we get to live. However, we might just want to spin the wheel again and hope we get three spells for free that we can hit, that we can then make more creatures with Shark Typhoon. Yep, they're going to give something haste and pump it. None of these have trample. Yeah. Okay. So we'll block. You, I guess. And we'll take eight. They might have a lightning bolt, which would be sad, but it is what it is. Lightning bolt in my face. Sort of would be weird if they had lightning bolt in this deck, but it is a good card, so I wouldn't blame them for including it. It would just be kind of weird in a creature deck. Um, yeah, we're not really going to have many more targets for Spell Pierce, and we get a creature off of it, so might as well do it. While it works. Mind Flayer is good. Okay, so we could take their Questing Beast. That's pretty good. But then if we do that, can we spin the wheel still? 
I believe we can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So. One. Two. Three. Let's. That only leaves us with four mana? Really? Why? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Why is it eight mana? I don't know. Well, there we go. That works. Target player. We'll put... This has haste, so it doesn't matter. We'll put... You back. Make a 6-6. Six, six. Oh, okay, so we, so we can still play this. Mind Flayer. Take your questing beast. Attack, attack, attack. Oh, this has reach. Oops. All right, one over, one oversight. <laughs> Can't complain, really. Uh, yeah. I mean, let's do this. Make a four-four. And spin the wheel. Holebreaker Horror, pretty nice. Okay, target now land permanent. We'll return your commander. We'll make a copy of Holebreaker Horror. And then I'll draw a card. Yep. <laughs> All right, I gotta say, like, part of the charm of this deck is like, yeah, it takes forever to get online, but once you get it online, it's it's filthy. Uh, it, at least the mono blur, blue version of this deck takes a little while to get online, but once you get it online and you're making copies of your Holebreaker Horrors and mind flaring their best creature and Shark Typhooning and, oh man, it's... Chef's kiss. Mwah. All right, let's do a deck review. If you've watched this far in the video, subscribe. Come on. Come on, just do it. Hit that subscribe button. Let's open a pack. Um, let's... I keep doing the Wilds of Eldraine one because they have the, um... The uh, old um, enchantments in there. And every once in a while, I get a good one. I like Dark Tutelage, but I already have that one. I definitely already have that, too. Alright. Destroy target on the permanent. Destroy case of 1 1. Yeah. These are all alright. All right, deck review. So, as I mentioned, um, you know, the it's it you know bottom line, it's fun to build this deck. So if, th if this is something that you know you think you want to do as like a deck building challenge for yourself, then feel free to download my list. It's in the description. Have fun with it. I will say though that like if you're looking to play competitively or win games more consistently, this is not the way to go. Um, and that's what I'm going to say for all these monocolor Golos decks. Um, so you can win with them, obviously, like I, I did win with them. And they're, you know, being monocolor definitely smooths out the mana curve and all that. But um, as we saw, like against the Ragavan deck, there's some big pitfalls with being a monocolor deck. For blue, it's removal, right? Um, 
it's really good against some other types of decks, and blue is probably the strongest color in Historic Brawl, so, you know, the ability to counter other people's um, ETBs, like uh, Atraxa, we didn't get to it in that game, but I had the ability, I had two, I think, counter spells in my hand that would have prevented Atraxa's ETB from happening, so that's unique to blue. Um, there's no other deck that can do that. Um, like in a mono black deck, the tracks would have come down, it would have had its ETB, they would have drawn a bunch of cards, and then we would have tried to kill it, but it's too late by then, because they got the, they got all the value in their hand, and honestly, they'd probably be happy to get a Traxa back in the command zone so they could do it again, gain more value. So the ability to remove stuff from the stack is, you know, blues, that's blues threshold, and it's very good in um, Historic Brawl. But it does have its downfalls. And then the other, on top of that, you're playing Golos, which is probably the number... I mean, this card's banned in Commander. Like, like, think about that for a sec. This card's legal in Historic Brawl, but it's banned in Commander. Now, I don't think it should be banned in Commander. I think that's stupid. But it is banned in Commander. It's because it's very powerful. So you're playing probably the most powerful Commander in Historic Brawl. Therefore, you're going to play all the other most powerful Commanders in Historic Brawl. And you've handicapped yourself with a mono blue shell, right? So just be realistic when you play this deck, have a realistic mindset that this is not the most optimal way to play Golos, but the, um, you know, Magic the Gathering, you know, matchmaker doesn't know that. All they know is that you're playing Golos. They don't, they're not considering, it's not built to consider the fact that you neutered yourself, right? Uh, so just keep that in mind. They're going to still think you're a five-color good stuff Golos deck, even though you're not. Um, but this deck was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed playing it. I think we really got to demonstrate, you know, how... It took a little bit of time for me to get there, but how you can combine the power of Golos with the power of a mono-colored deck. You know, um, just like... I mean, we didn't get to do it, but just like the thought of Icebreaker crack, uh, Kraken plus um, Thassa locking them um out of the game was just just a beautiful you know beautiful thing that only mono blue can do right or we got to play curibus the sea god against that mono green deck and they didn't know what to do right um extra turns always super um impactful in a game um you know in that last game against um i forget who we were playing but um we Oh, we were playing Halana Lena. We, you know, did a bunch of broken stuff, and then we took an extra turn with Karn's Temporal Sundering, bounced their creature back to their hand, and then we were going to have a whole nother combat step um, and a whole nother turn of shenanigans and spinning the wheel with Golos. So, you know, all those things start to combine and create, like, a sea of overwhelming value that the opponent usually can't keep up with. It just takes a little while to get there. So that's why... I built the deck the way it is, where the the front half of the deck, the low mana curve, is all counter spells and control, and the back half of the deck is all the payoffs for Golos that push you over the top and win you the game. So if you like the video, subscribe, like, you know, literally like the video, leave a comment, let me know what you thought. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.